Next up, under more ladder logic instructions, bit shift right. You can see that the bits are shifting to the right instead of the left. And on the face of it, um, that, that might be all you think there is to it, that it shifts right instead of left. But as you'll see in the upcoming labs, there's just a little bit more to it than it shifts to the right. Okay, bit shift right. Logic, the logic looks identical to the bit shift left, except it says bit shift right. Got the same bit address to load from, same length of 10. Uh, we picked a different file. We're starting with B317, but we could have started with B315. So they look pretty much alike. So we opened uh, data file R6, the control data type, locked it on top, and we opened up the input file I1, locked it on top, and we opened up data file B3 and locked it on top and shaped it so you could see 15, 16, 17, and 18. The bit shift right instruction is, upon a false or true transition of the rung, controlled by a controlled data type at one of the memory locations tagged as R60 through R615. If you used a larger processor, you could use anything from R6 colon 0 through R6255. Now, this is reading just like the bit shift left, but it will change here in a minute. The instruction can affect the state of all the bits in the file. The first word of the file is B317, and the size of the file in words is determined by the length in bits. Remember, if you've got less than 16 bits, then it's just B317. In this example, the file is one word because the length is less than one word. It's a length of 10. And it is bits 0 through 9, just like it was the bit shift left. If the length were 17, then the file would be B317 and B318. The first bit loaded would be B318 0. That should be your first clue of what was different with the bit, bit shift right. With the bit shift left, if you started with B317, you would have loaded in B317 bit 0. But with the bit shift right, with a length of 17, you're loading what would have normally been the last position and going backwards or to the right instead of to the left. The length of 17 includes the 16 bits of B317 and the first bit of B318. So the file structure is the same for both the BSL and the BSR. It's just you're going to shift in a different direction and you're going to load from the other end. So B317 length of 10 is still bit 0 through 9. The BSR instruction, when you have a false or true transition of the rung, will shift the states of all of the bits of the file one position to the right while copying the state of the bit address, the source, which in this case is input 5, into the bit position that is at the length from bit 0 of the first word upwards towards the next highest word in memory. I know it's a mouthful, but uh, by running these labs and playing with this instruction, it becomes So we're still working with the same 10 bits. For length of 10, we're working with bits 0 through 9. However, when it shifts, it shifts to the right, which means that whatever was in bit 0 gets shifted off into the O zone, into the bottomless bit bucket, into bit space. Remember, with the bit shift left, when it shifted to the unload position, the unload position was the length plus 1. However, with bit shift right, the unload position is bit space. It just gets dumped out into bit space. So on the occasion when a state of 1 is shifted to the unload position, length plus 1, in this case, since you're going to the right, it's not a bit position in the next word. It's just literally in bit space. However, when it's shifted to the unload position, the unload bit will be set to 1. As zeros are shifted through the unload position, the unload bit is equal to the state of its position. 0 equals 0, 1 equals 1. 
The idea of unloading is in concept only because remember, because the states of the bits continue to shift until they reach the next boundary between words. In this case, unlike the bit shift left, you could almost say that it is actually unloading. So this is one minor difference between the bit shift right and the bit shift left. That really doesn't matter when you use instruction because when you shift a one into position zero, that's the last position always. So the file B317 in the instruction, bit zero of B317 is the last position because you're shifting to the right. So when you shift out of there, the unload bit goes on, but you can't go any place to look at that bit because it doesn't shift to bit 15 of B318 or to bit 15 of B316. It's just gone. The BSR does not own the file that it affects a shift through. Again, the state of each bit in the designated file is subject to the results of any instruction in the logic that addresses that memory location, both to the bit level as well as the word level. The sole function of this instruction is to shift the contents of its file one bit, bit position to the right on each false to true transition of the rung, replacing the first bit with the state of the bit address as it shifts to the right. Remember, the first bit is the highest bit in that file. So for B317, bit 9 is the highest bit. It loads in bit 9, whereas with the bit shift left, remember it loaded in bit 0 and went to the left and then unloaded from 9 into 10. With the bit shift right, you load in 9, you shift it over to bit position 0, and then when it shifts out, that's the unload, and the unload bit comes on. OK, you've got your logic edited. You've downloaded your online. And you have B3, 16, 17, and 18 displayed as shown. And I had you toggle input 0 on and off a couple times, just so you can see that with all the switches in the off position, the rung's going false, true, false, true, but there's nothing to load but zeros. It is actually shifting, but when you shift a zero to a zero, it's still zero. Any bits change in the three registers displayed, 16, 17, or 18? Nope, for the reason I just stated. Zero equals zeros. The zero equals zero, the zeros are shifting, but there's nothing to see. Flip the switch associated with the bit address, which is input five, to the on position while watching the bits in the file address. Toggle input zero once only. Did any bits change? Yes, which one? The tenth bit or bit nine. The BSR loads at the highest bit and shifts towards bit zero. Just the opposite as a bit shift left. Clear any bits that are not zero. In other words, clear out B3, B3 16, 17, 18. Change the length to five and repeat the above steps and make mental notes. Any bits change? Yes. Which ones? The fifth bit of a length of five is bit four. So bit four changed. Clear any bits that are not zero. Change the length to 17. With input five on, toggle input zero once only. What is the address of the bit that was loaded with the state of the bit from the bit address? B3180. So you see, if you had a length of 17 with a bit shift left from the previous lab, you would still be working on the same group of 17 bits. The only difference is you're loading at the highest bit instead of the lowest bit and then shift in the opposite direction. Shift the one to the right until it occupies bit 0 of B317. That's the last position. Shift it one more time. Where did it shift to? It shifted into bit space, it's infinity and beyond, ceased to exist, the bottomless bit basket. If you were to change the length to 33, what address would be the bit address, what address would the bit address be loaded into each time the BSR saw the false to true rung transition? In other words, what would be the highest bit in your file? B3190 exact same 33 bits that you worked with 
with a bit shift left, the difference is you're loading the highest instead of the lowest and you're shifting the opposite direction. If both the BSL and BSR, in both the BSL and BSR, when the length exceeds 16 bits, the shift includes the next register in the data file in the same direction that the bit is shifting. True. The last little lab in this section was a bit shift left using the unload bit as the bit address or recirculating. So after you edited your logic, uh, downloaded, went online, opened B3, locked it on top. We had you switch on input 5 and then toggle input 0 on and off once just to get a 1 in the first position. Then switch the bit address off and then toggle input 0 on and off repeatedly while watching the behavior of the 1 as it shifts to the left. How many shifts does it take to move the bit from position 0, bit 0 position, all the way around and back to bit 0 position? Well, you could have answered 10 or 11. Uh, I'm going to throw 10 in here because we have a length of 10. So I did, it, the question did state. How many shifts does it take to move the bit from bit zero position, not into and then around? So once it's into bit zero position, it takes 10 um, false or true transitions to get it back to bit zero again. You can do the same thing with bit shift right. How does that compare with the length, 10 shifts? Equal to the length, the bits recirculate until overwritten with a zero. So you could have a rotary index table with 10 positions on it and when you load a product into one of the nest or into one of the positions you put a 1 in that position so you have stations 0 through 9 <clears throat> and as you rotate it maybe it continually rotates and occasionally a product is taken off and wherever it's taken off you would put in a 0 but you want to recirculate it because you're not really shifting them out or off of the rotor index table. They are recirculating continually. <clears throat>